Good afternoon. My name is Giovanni Guizzo. I'm a postdoc researcher in the CRAS group at University College of London, and today I'm going to present to you a paper that I wrote with two of my colleagues, Ming Lin and Justina Petk. The name of the paper is Impact of Test Suite Coverage on Overfitting in Genetic Improvement of Software. For those of you who don't know, Genetic Improvement, or GI for short, aims at getting an existing software and automatically modifying it to improve a given software property. This property can be either functional or non-functional. For example, an, uh, an example of functional improvement is automated software repair. In this type of improvement, we get a, a software that's not passing all test cases and we apply modifications to it to make it pass the test cases. Uh, another example of, of improvement is the non-functional improvement of runtime, memory consumption, energy consumption, and so on. For doing that, we represent the software into a genetic representation and apply modifications to this representation. For example, we can represent it as a tree or a list of statements or lines or blocks of code, and then we can apply um, mutations and crossover to those, such as deleting statements, swapping lines, copying blocks of codes, and so on. The idea is that those modifications will maintain the desired behavior of the software, the previous behavior of the software, while improving the target property. To check if that occurs, we use the test suite as an oracle. The test suite should faithfully capture the desired behavior and be used during the GI process to guide the generation of valid patches. The test suits can be created manually or automatically. Either way, um, they should be strong enough to review the faults. Otherwise, if they're too weak, then GI will generate patches that are buggy, so we don't really want to do that. Hence, some coverage metrics can be used to guide the creation of strong test suits. For example, branch coverage, line coverage, mutation testing, those are all common criteria used in the literature to guide the creation of those uh, test suits. If a test suit achieves a given threshold of those criteria, then uh, it is a good test suit to be used as an oracle. However, as strong as a test suite can be, GI still suffers from a problem called overfitting. So basically, during the tra training phase, uh, GI is going to generate multiple patches that are apparently going to be valid. However, when faced with new test cases, or test cases that were left out during the improvement process, basically the, patch, uh, the patches they don't fit anymore, they fail. So this is called overfitting because those patches, they're only good for the test cases that were used to train them, to, to find them. If they, uh, they don't generalize to new test cases, then um, those are not really good patches. Those are not really patches that can fix a bug or patches can, that can maintain the previous functionality of software. So this raises the question, what feature should a given test suite have to aid the GI process in producing useful and correct patches? Or, in other words, which features should it have that would lead to least overfitting when used within the GI process? This question was already asked and answered in previous work for automated software repair, but uh, there is no work in the literature that investigates this, uh, this overfitting problem for non-functional improvements of software. With that question in mind, the objective of this work is to measure the correlation between traditional test suite metrics and given test suite impact on overfitting the GI process. We want to unveil if any of those metrics can be used as a predictor to the overfitting or non-overfitting ratio of GI patches. Also, we want to, autom we want to investigate if automatically generated test cases differ from manually generated test cases in the overfitting ratio and if they do if there is any uh, criteria that any criterion that can be used to generate 
better test suits that overfit less, for instance. So without further ado, let's go to the research questions that guided the experiments of this work. Research question number one is, given a particular test suit, can GI find a valid non-overfitting patch? If GI cannot find a valid and non-overfitting patch, then there is no reason to evaluate any correlation between non-overfitting ratios and metrics. Research question number two is, how does overfitting rate vary with the input test suite during search? So basically here, we evaluate multiple automatically generated test suites and we compare their overfitting ratios between themselves. So basically we want to unveil if any of those criteria um, is better or worse than the others in overfitting. Research question number three focuses on the correlations between the metrics, the coverage metrics, and the non-overfitting ratio. So instead of looking to the generation criteria, we now look at the whole test suite sets that we have, and we evaluate if any of the metrics, any of the descriptive metrics that describe those, um, those test suites in coverage can correlate can strongly correlate with uh, overfitting or non-overfitting. Finally, the fourth research question um, measures the difference between automatically generated test suits and the manually generated ones. With this question, we want to unravel if any, any of those two techniques, automatically and manually, can yield better results regarding overfitting. So for doing our experiment, uh, we use the Jing tool. Jing is a GI tool for Java program. It, it is open source and is available on GitHub. Then we use a data set with nine sorting algorithms. Those sorting algorithms have um, test suites that were manually created and they were also used in, in previous work. For the generation of test cases, we use the famous evil suite. Evil suite is an evolutionary computation um, tool to generate test cases. I guess everyone here knows about it. But anyway, we used five sets of criteria to generate test uh, suites. The first one is branch coverage, then line coverage, then conditional branch coverage, weak mutation, and then a uh, combination of all of the above. So for each program, we generate five types of test suits. For the genetic improvement process, we use the default hill climbing algorithm implemented in Jing. And for the test suits, we generate subsets of randomly sampled test cases at 25%, 50%, and 75%. Well, evil suit is too good. Evil suit generates test cases and test suites that cover all the branches of the software, that cover um, all the, the statements of the software. So we had to generate those, those subsets of test cases to have a little bit of variation in the coverage metrics. So for each one of those five automatically generated types of test suites, we have four sets, one with 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. Then, because of the randomness of the, the GI process, we also um, execute 20 independent runs. So at the end, we have 20 sets of patches for each sample of each type of, of um, test suite for each program. For the overfitting identification, we do a cross-validation. So basically, we get the, all the patches that were generated using one type of test cases as Oracle, and we test those patches against the older type of test cases. Th then uh, we can check if a test case can make a patch fail. If ca they can, then it means that that patch, the patch that failed, overfits to the test cases used to generate it. We do this both ways. Patches generated with manually developed test cases are tested against automatically generated test cases, and patches uh, generated with automatic, automatically generated test cases are tested against manually generated test cases. Okay, going to the results now. 
The first one is the sanity check. I will not get into much detail here. Okay, this is not very uh, interesting. So, in summary, for 210 um, executions of GI, only seven of them were not able to generate a non-overfitting patch. So, the answer to research question number one is yes, GI can generate non-overfitting and valid patches for non-functional improvement. With that in mind, then we can go to research question number two, which aims at um, comparing the non-overfitting ratios of different types of test suits. This box plot here summarizes our results. As you can see here, the y-axis is the non-overfitting ratio. So the greater this value, the fewer overfitting patches generated. Um, as you can see, Patches generated with manually created test cases overfit much less than the ones generated with uh, automatically created test cases. For example, um, weak mutation test suits, test suits created with weak mutation, generate in a median of 25% of non-overfitting patches. Um, they are very similar, the results are very similar, however, branch is a little bit better than the others. And this can also be seen in the results of our statistical tests. What you're seeing here is the Fisher's exact test uh, results. So basically, the y-axis of this box plot represents the statistical ranks. A statistical rank is the ranking, but when there is a statistical tie, we average the, the result. So for example, in one specific case here, manually generated test cases led to patches that overfit as much as um, the patches generated with um, test suits generated with line coverage. The others here are also based on these statistical ranks. So this is a way of summarizing our results. As you can see, most of them are similar. Manual, uh, manually generated test suits overfit much less, but branch here is slightly better than the others. Now going to research question number three. So this research question aims at comparing the, the correlations between specific coverage metrics and the non-overfitting ratios. This table here summarizes the, the correlation using Spearman's correlation test. Each value that you're seeing here is the correlation between the metric in the column with the test suits used to uh, generate patches for that row. So basically, uh, for example, the line coverage, the first, the first line coverage value, 0 0.45, means that there is a 0 0.45 correlation between line coverage of test suits and the non-overfitting ratio for the sort bubble program. So uh, asterisk marked values are statistically significant. We also group the the um, uh, the correlation coefficients into groups of types of criteria used to generate the test suits, size of the test suit sample and um, no grouping at all. As you can see, most of the results are not statistically significant, and the ones that are, are small correlation. So this suggests that there is, there is no real evidence for um, metrics, for coverage metrics to be used as reliable predictors for overfitting during GI. Finally, research question number four aims at comparing manually and automatically generated test cases. So basically, the last column here is the most important one. It is the non-overfitting ratio. So as you can see, manually generated test suits usually, not usually, always generate better uh, patches, generate patches that do not overfit with statistical significance despite the fact that automatically generated test cases cover more of the software. The other columns here, you can see the coverage metrics. So even though automatically generated test cases guide GI into um, patches that seem less overfitting, they are not. 
going to conclusions now. Basically, in this work, we investigated the overfitting of non-functional GI based on a test suite at Brutes. We found out that test suites generated with branch coverage lead to patches that overfit a bit less, although this difference is small, still significant. Then we found out that there is no strong evidence of correlation between the coverage metrics and overfitting of patches, so those coverage metrics they cannot be used as reliable predictors to overfitting ratios. Finally, we found out that manually written test suits are less prone to overfitting, despite the fact that they cover less of the software. This is it. Thank you very much.